Hi guys, and welcome to figure skating talk number five, I think, I don't know. I've missed talking about figure skating, so here we are. Today we are going to talk about mainly Europeans, a little bit about the Grand Prix Finals, which was a long time ago, but I did not talk about it, even though I really wanted to. A little bit about nationals and preview for four continents. It's gonna be probably a long video, but who cares? I just want to talk about figure skating. If we're gonna, we're gonna start chronologically, so we might as well start with the finals, just very shortly. Um, my predictions at that time was that Shimon would win and Nathan would get second and then Jingwan would get third. Um, of course, I was I should have known that Shimon's silver curse is so strong that nothing could have helped him in that situation. Um, and Nathan did skate better, so that's completely fair. Um, I'm actually uh, Nathan has been doing really really well, which is um, a bit of a surprise considering how busy he is. Uh, but good for him. I think uh, he is so busy though, that's why he's given four continents, um, which makes sense. He doesn't really need a competition. Um, and it's better for him to just focus on school and stuff. And then four worlds, which is obviously bigger than four continents. Um, but congrats to them. And I'm really proud of Jun Wan for doing so well. Um, obviously, he is my baby boy. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that basically that's it. That was a good competition. The women's was def definitely more dramatic with, uh, especially with, I feel like Sadako definitely, uh, I don't want to say she disappointed, but it was definitely surprising that she finished so far down. Um, did she finish fifth or sixth? I feel like she, it was very far down. I feel like she finished sixth and I feel like she should have been fifth or something like that. Um, it's been a while. Um, but the podium is, with the exception of third place, which I thought was more likely to go to Kaori, uh, it was pretty much like what we could have expected from a Rika versus Alina showdown. Because uh, Alina needed to be perfectly clean and she hasn't been throughout the Grand Prix series. And I don't believe she was at the Grand Prix final either last year. Um, she kind of peaked at Europeans in the Olympics. Um, so it, it was... I wouldn't say it's unsurprising that Rika won, but it definitely wasn't uh, something that couldn't have been predicted. And I think a lot of people did think that Rika would win. Um, it helped a lot that she she had that absolutely stellar show program. Um, I believe that's the first time she skated the show program clean, break a world record. It was very nice and very good. Um, made me cry. Uh, <laughs> um, although not as much as Kaori's free skate. Kaori's free skate has me weeping every single time I see it. And you could have imagined what I felt like when I watched her at nationals. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I'm very happy with the podium. I'm very, very happy with Lisa uh, having gotten in third. And I actually think it was very unjust of the Russian Federation to not send her to Europeans, seeing as after Alina, she had the best Grand Prix series. Um, because despite the fact that I was rooting for Sofia Samadarova throughout the whole Europeans, I don't actually think she should have been there. Because uh, obviously, they would send uh, Stanislava because she finished first of the seniors at Russian Nationals. And then Alina, she had to go. She's defending champion. She finished second at the Grand Finals, first in both her qualifiers, Olympic champion, all that. Um, so it makes sense for Alina to go. And she also finished second, I think, of the seniors. Um, but then it was Sofia that was after. Um, and I really do think that even, like, even though uh, Lisa didn't go to her nationals, I feel like she should have been sent to Europeans. Um... But I believe they haven't yet. I think it's going to be in a couple of weeks that they put out their world team. And I think, um, personally, I think they should send uh, Alina, Elisaveta, and Sofia. Um, I mean, I am a huge Senya fan, but she hasn't done well this, this season. So it's not fair to send her unless she completely knocks it out of the park and someone withdraws. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, I just hope when she comes back strong next season, that's, that's it for me. But that makes sense. That's what we've been expecting for her during her... Um, little what's it called a transition season basically um but yeah i i think based on the fact that elizabeth got bronze in the final thing it was unfair for russian federation to not send her to europeans because just because she had a uh a, a flu during nationals i think that was dumb because she could definitely have maybe not mm, no she could definitely have made the podium now i think about it because we had um viveka was really good but i think elizabeth is better i think elizabeth could probably have beaten Alina too um with the way she unfortunately skated um and then they could have had that Russian sweep that they were almost certain to have gotten 
had Stanislava skated clean or just near clean. Um, but you know, that's that. That happens. <laughs> um, it's it's been. I mean, I even thought last year I thought we would get a Russian sweep as well, but then Maria didn't quite um, live up to it. So that happens too. Um, but yeah, as I've already moved on to nationals, basically, um, nationals was was uh, for for the main thing. I I watched. Um, I didn't watch full nationals. The only thing I followed very closely was the women's in Japan because. That was the pure blood bet. They had three spots and like eight skaters who couldn't make it to that podium. It was completely crazy. Of course, no matter how Rika had done, she'd probably be sad anyway because she now has a world record. She has her triple axles and she won the Grand Prix finals. And because Japan doesn't just base their criteria on nationals, she would have been chosen either way. Um, I mean, the only thing they have is that the winner definitely goes. So. Um, but yeah, I uh, I am a f big fan of Kaori Sakamoto, and you, oh my god, I was so happy that she won. I was rooting for her the whole time, um, because obviously, um, I've said this before, my favorite skater is Wakaba Higuchi, but she hasn't really had a good season, and she's still injured. So I was kind of hoping for her not to get sent to world, so she could focus more on recovering, uh, so that she can come back strong next year. Because I'd rather have her rest and then, uh, be great for next year, because that would be, that just be better. So I was. Um, I wasn't rooting against her, I was just rooting for some people more than her. Um, personally, I would have loved to see uh, the podium be Kaori Rika and Mai Mihara. Um, I kind of got close to that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, it was definitely a really, really good competition. I, again, I, every, I, I watch Kaori's free skate so often and every single time I watch it, it I just cry so much because it's so good. Um, it's, it's, if I had to describe, like, what I like in figure skating, like, what kind of style I like, Kaori's is the, is the epitome of the kind of style I like to see. Um, now, I still do love everything, as you probably realize at this point, but uh, Kaori just really touches my heart. Um, and she has very, very few flaws as well, so... I mean, her, her, her jumps, especially her edge jumps, they're just so good. Um, it's really a crime that she hasn't gotten a perfect plus five for her triple loop yet, which is... I mean, the transitions is that, the, the ease of it, the running edge. Uh, <laughs> everything is just so soft. Um, but yeah, that was definitely, that was probably my favorite nationals. Um, for the men's in Japan, it was kind of like, I just, Shoma was going to win, that's fine. And then it was kind of like a battle for for the for the last spots in Worlds, because Shizu was going to be sent either way, obviously. Um, um, I'm very happy that KG actually got it, because a lot of people thought it was going to be like, um, other people who would be battling for that, but KG has always been pretty good at nationals and just not at everything else, <laughs> which is a shame. I'm always like, KG, can you just take out the quad cell? Obviously, it's not working for you. Just go with a safer triple and it, it'll be fine. Um, Because especially in this new system, doing a clean triple is way better than doing a, a bad quad, Um, which wasn't necessarily the case last season. Um, or just the previous system, so <laughs> I, I really want KG to stop doing the quad. I understand that he probably can't do it, but he, he has such a low success rate that it frustrates me that they keep it in, especially in the short program. <laughs> it's just very frustrating. Because um, you, you, you've seen with Jason Brown, it, it, a clean short program with just triples can get you really far. Um, and KG definitely has the potential to score really high in presentation points. He just needs clean skates, and he's just not doing it. It's very frustrating. Um, but yeah, Daisuke Takahashi in, in silver, um, I don't think it was too... Hmm, what can I say? It was too surprising, because obviously the judges already love him so much. So I think... Um, I mean, I'm not going to say his, his scores is scores undeserved, because obviously... First of all, Japanese nationals and all nationals are super inflated anyway. Um... Not that this was too bad, actually. I don't think uh, Russian and Japanese nationals were that bad with their overscoring. Um, but yeah, I feel like because his presentation points were going to be through the roof anyway. Um, um, and he skated well. Uh, so, you know, that's fair. Um, anyway, um, I, I am quite happy, though, that he turned down the spot for Worlds. I mean... We, we knew that because he said in the beginning of the season that he was only here to do domestic competitions. Um, 
but I, I, I just prefer, because he has retired at this point, or had retired, um, and I think because he's obviously not going to stay for another four years, I think it's more important to just further the younger generation of skaters in Japan, especially because it's like they have shown where they have used it, but eventually they, they won't have those skaters anymore, so they should look to their juniors and their younger seniors, um, and um, of course with Yuzo not doing four continents, that gives uh, the opportunity for uh for tomono to do four continents in his place uh, which is really great because i love that boy so much um so yeah that's it on japanese nationals i talked a little bit about in russian nationals um the big controversy there was the the juniors sweeping the podium um i personally don't disagree with the fact that the juniors um especially juniors who are as old as they are they are or most of them i think i, I forget their ages um but at least two of them, uh, if I remember my facts correctly, are eligible for seniors next year. So I think it's fair to have them, like, give them this chance to compete with seniors before they go into the actual senior ranks. Um, I don't, I don't really follow juniors that much. I've obvi obviously, we know about like the the qua phenomenon with the uh, Ethereum students and all that. Um, I personally, I mean, great for them that they're jumping quads. They aren't super pretty, but. The sport has to progress, and I think definitely quads are happening. We, we Hira too has talked about doing quads, and I think um, a couple other skaters of in the women's uh, category have talked about doing quads or quads being a thing by the next Olympics. And I mean, we have to move forward somehow, but um, they definitely need some work. I, I'm personally, I'm not a big fan of especially Trusova's quads because she has like. Um, when she wraps her legs for the jump, she tends to wrap them at the at the knees instead of at the ankles, which just, it makes them a little bit uglier. Um, and I also think it's a little bit counterproductive when you're trying to get a lot of rotations. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's just a personal thing of mine. But I think it's the surf that they won. I think, because, first of all, the seniors did not have a good competition. That's the first thing. And, and they... They, they skated cleaner, they had a higher technical content, so I, I think they deserved it. Um, uh, obviously, Senya, she won the free skate, also deserved, I think. Uh, was she overscored? Yes. Was everyone else overscored? Probably also, yes. Um, but I'm a big fan of her new short program. I will miss Orange Color Sky, but let's be real, it has not been the way it was at Autumn Classics, where she really got into character, and then after that, the pressure just kind of made her revert to her like stoic murder face which is really good for some programs and not good for her jazzy orange colored sky program where she's supposed to be smiling and happy um so it, it was definitely the right call i think to change her her short program because she needed a chance at nationals and i don't think that program would have gotten given her a chance um so that's a shame obviously um but yeah uh for the men in russia um surprise uh that was definitely the, the most uh surprising thing because Mikha Koyata has always been very hmm, inconsistent but because the field isn't actually that high in the for the Russian man I I just assumed that he would take a win pretty easily like not would like he wouldn't win by like 20 points or 10 points even but he would definitely I feel like he could have easily won Mm, but he didn't. <laughs> uh, Maxim Kaufman really came through. It was really funny to have those two skate last and then both skating to Carmen. Because um, Carmen, as much of a war horse as it is, it's way more used in the women's uh, side than with the men. So it, I, I generally really like Carmen for the men just because it's a different kind of interpretation you get out of it. And I personally really like Mikhail. So. Um, but yeah, it was really <laughs> surprising to see him. Uh, not win and I mean at this point his inconsistency is just breaking my heart um, I I'm more sad though for for Dima because I, I really like him um, I don't even remember where he finished definitely off the podium because I think it must have been uh, Max and Mikhail and Alexander Samarin uh, seeing as they were the three sent to <laughs> Europeans um, I forget as I said I didn't follow this very closely I just like kind of saw the things that I wanted to see because nationals is always like a little dangerous for me because mm, the scoring is a little eh that there are th the politics are way too easily seen and because it is a domestic competition um, 
it's just a little different. I, I just, I like the international more and also like just in that period, every national is going on at the same time and you have to kind of prioritize what you want to see. Um, so usually I just go for Japanese nationals for the women. That's my favorite. Um, but yeah, uh, Russian national nationals was definitely <laughs> um, surprising all over the place. I was, yeah, that was, that was a thing. Uh, Canadian nationals uh, didn't watch too much of because um, I, I a lot of the Canadians uh, I'm not really that big of a fan of they, they ha don't have many left because Caitlin Osman is taking her break Gabby Dalman just came back from her break and obviously she wasn't fully ready for that um, but full support to her um, did really good in her show program um, but that's all I've dared to see. And for the men, I didn't even watch anything. I was very surprised when I then looked at the result and saw that Keegan had had lost, not just to Nam Nguyen, but also to um, uh, Steven Gokolov. Because um, I thought Keegan was going to be a sure for the for the win again, uh, even more so than I thought with Mikhail for uh, for Russian Nats. But Nam Nguyen took the crown. I'm very happy for him because I, I really like Nam Nguyen. Um, so that that's that was surprising. Uh, obviously, uh, Stephen Gogolev is not a senior, so it'll be still an Ewing and Keegan Messing going to Worlds um, and Four Continents. So that's going to be interesting because uh, I think Keegan definitely has potential to to get those really like into the high rankings. And depending on how many mistakes are made by the top skaters, he could even get a medal both at Four Continents and at Worlds. Um, but we'll see. It, it all depends on how clean he skates, and he definitely has the potential, but he's more inconsistent than I thought he would be compared to last season, which is a thing for a lot of the skaters, and I think, especially the men, it, it has a lot to do with the 30 seconds taken out the free skate, because obviously it, it, it's made it harder for them to, to put in the transitions and just like boil everything down those 30 seconds when you only have one jumping pass less. Because uh, some skaters have said it before, it's you can't just take one jump out and then 30 seconds because that's not equivalent. It only takes a couple of seconds to like set up for your jump and then jump it. Um, so yeah, uh, that was Canadian Nationals. Then we had US Nationals, which was just a couple weeks ago. Um, I only watched a bit of the men because I was mostly interested in Jason. Because uh, again, it's like Nathan Chen was obviously a guaranteed favorite and there was no way like he would have to make so many mistakes for anyone else to even catch up to him. Um, and as we saw with the scoring, the judges were so biased. Um, I mean, it. I, I'm not gonna touch too much on the scores, but there was definitely, uh, you could see that they loved him more than they loved like people like Vincent Chow or other skaters. Uh, so yeah, um, but a serve win for Nathan, definitely. Um, and happy that Jason is going to Worlds and to Four Continents because uh, he has the potential again to do really, really well at those competitions. Um, and for the women, um, I don't know much about what her, uh, Lisa Liu, 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 I don't know how to pronounce the name, sorry. Um, but I, I do think it was surprising that she won because what I've gauged from her is that she, she's a good jumper. She obviously has triple axle, but compared to seniors, you can see the difference in age. Because she's not even a junior skater, I believe. Um, so um, I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to check those programs out at some point, but that was definitely a surprise to wake up to. Um, Brady Snell and Mar 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 Mariah Bell finishing off the podium in the in the positions that they did, obviously not surprising um, if we take that they had someone who beat them. Um, personally, I was uh, rooting for Mariah Ball because she's done really well this season and her programs really speak to me but I do also really like Brady Chanel's programs I've said this before I think uh her programs this year speak a lot more to me than last year because it seems it seems like she has dropped the act of just being like this perfect elegant skater and found more of like her niche more powerful program that fits more with her style of jumping and skating and it just it looks much better than the things she did last season where she tried to channel some elegant elegance elegance that she just doesn't have naturally because yeah she's a sweet girl but she she has she's just powerful she feeds up her jumps and her speed and all that so these programs definitely fit her better but i'm interested in seeing what they will do here at four continents just today i am very excited um and now we can move into europeans which happened the same week as u.s nationals i don't 
I, I, I literally have like this theory that the reason US Nationals was so late, I don't know if it's ever been this late, it might have, but I'm so sure they pushed it so far because Nathan had exams and they needed him there. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's fully full out my theory on that but like whatever um because it was just like why would you put it there usually it's like nationals are earlier but whatever uh <laughs> uh now for for europeans um let's let's start with let's start with the ladies because we mm, we can put happy at la to the last thing uh <laughs> europeans as i mentioned before i was rooting really hard for sofia de samodorova um She's been really, really growing on me this season. Um, and I, I think there's so much potential for her, obviously. Uh, especially her transitions need a lot of work. Because um, she really, really telegraphs her jumps. But it's okay. That means there's something to work on. She's only 17, I believe. Um, and by the way, every everyone skated. Her, her victory was definitely deserved. I saw a lot of people say that she was overscored. And I haven't looked at the PDFs yet. But I don't think it was that bad, to be fair. Um, but good for her. Uh, Alina in second place, that seems fair. I don't remember what the score difference was, but it's probably, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think there was too much controversy about that. Obviously she's had some, some issues with her gems. Um, there, have I talked about this before? I think it's the, the main thing going on with Alina is definitely her growth spurt. And I really, I really, really hate because uh, she mentioned um, a couple of, in the interview, I think it was after, either after Nebelhorn or her first Grand Prix in, in Helsinki, um, she mentioned that she, she doesn't really, like, she doesn't, she's not addressing the growth problem, even though she has grown. Um, but the problem is that when you grow, your center of gravity changes, uh, the way you have to do your jump changes, because your body changes a lot, and that you're not going to, like, you're not going to function the same way. Um, so she has to change how she does jumps. Um, and if she doesn't, that's why we see the mistakes we're seeing. And obviously it won't happen overnight. They might be working on it. I don't know. Um, but there is, there is the, the concern that we've seen her, uh, practicing the quad flip when really she should be reworking her technique for the triples because, uh, with her body changes, she can't stick to the same kind of technique she had. Um, and that's the danger because we know the track list, the, yeah, the track list of, of Viteri skaters. And I don't, we all don't want Alina to be another one of those skaters who's just here for a couple of seasons, has her high and then leaves. Um, cause Alina has so much potential, um, which isn't really tapped into. And we can't, we can't just expect that whenever it doesn't go well for Viteri skaters, they're just going to switch coach. That's going to be such a rare thing. And the fact that Sanya did it is brave and completely unprecedented um and alina's definitely gonna not gonna follow her f um in her shoes because just because footsteps shoes whatever just because it terry made her olympic champion um so uh yikes um <laughs> i'm just i'm worried for her and i because i want her to do really well but it seems that she is i want to say she's losing her jumps just yet but there is uh a lot to be said for the fact that her her triple lutz does not look as great as it did last season she's not pulling out triple lutz triple loop combinations as easily as she did last season um and she's she has more injuries which just could be from the fact that she keeps falling over courts as they keep saying she does and i'm not gonna completely like just throw it under the rug like a lot, i've seen a lot of people do just like say that they, that's false and she it's actually practice injuries and whatever whatever um, but it could just be a combination. Um, but we'll see. I, I think the real test is going to be next season. Because she still ha she has kept her jumps to a, a point where she's still very competitive. Where she's still, um, she's still getting medals. Like It's not that she's not getting medals. It's just that we're not seeing the same quality from her and her jumps that we did last season. Especially by the... I want to say the last part of the season because we can forget Italy, but Europeans and Olympics, which were her two best competitions. Um, she might peak at Worlds, who knows? Um, but I would say it seems unlikely. Uh, the clear favorite going into to Worlds is going to be Rika Kihira, um, unless she completely falls apart today and in three days. But let's see. 
Um, obviously, I'll be rooting for Kaori. Um, I think I, I don't think I've mentioned this, but I'm gonna be there personally. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to see the women's uh, the women ice dance and pairs, but I did not get tickets for men's uh, competition. So my my quest for seeing Yusu is just every time I try, it it just not it's not working for me. Uh, he withdrew from Wolves last year and. That was a shame, and this year I just don't have tickets. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try again next year. Um, anyway, um, what was I talking about? Europeans, ladies. Um, now, it was very interesting because without Carolina Kostner and without who else? European women. It's the Russians and Karolina Kostner, basically, that we have going on. We don't have, like, top women in Europe anymore. Um, be careful how I phrase that. Um, personally, I was rooting for uh, May Berenice Mayday for bronze, because I really love her. Um, did not happen, but I am definitely happy for Viveka. We don't really have um, big skaters, especially women, female skaters, in Scandinavia and then I'm gonna count Finland as Scandinavian now because I need some sort of national thing like thingy uh, <laughs> so I'm very happy to for Finland to be put on the map in that way um, especially because like uh, I'm from Denmark and uh, the Danish ice dance pair we had obviously just moved to Canada last season so uh, they'll be me making their international debut as Canadian ice dance couple uh, at four continents. So I'm very happy, I'm very happy, I'm very interested in seeing where they will um, place. If you don't know who they are, it's uh, Nikolai, what's his name? Nikolai Sorensen and, hmm, what's her name? Uh, I can't pronounce her name, it's so French. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, Bord Sorensen and Bordeaux, I think that's how you pronounce them. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm interested in that, even though I, I dance in pairs is not really my, my forte. Obviously, I'm not really talking about it, um, but I like dance just to watch. Uh, not so much pairs because it scares me and I'm really scared that I'm going, watch, going to watch that live, but yikes. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'm, I'm just going to talk, stop talking about the women and we're going to move on to the men's competition. Uh, the men's competition was completely overshadowed of course by Javi's not necessarily return to the sport but just this being his final competition and the fact that he hasn't competed since Japan Open and hasn't really had a serious competition since the Olympics last year um but it was spectacular he did great in the short he get, did great in the free and he won um and it was a, a great way to end his career I think um it's really sad that I never got to see him live because obviously he wasn't a world champion here and I'm just really unlucky when it comes to my favorite skaters um but um it was spectacular I think the controversy of the men's competition was Alexander Samarin um more so than I'm gonna talk about Javi's complaints about the ISU later because oh, it was so great um but Alexander Samarin this is nothing against him as a skater because this is not his fault scoring is never the skater's fault it is the judge's fault however because did he deserve to be in second half on the show program? I don't think so. Did he deserve the presentation points he kept getting? No, not really. Um, I've said this before, I don't like talking about overscoring, but there is something to be said when you overscore someone and it has an effect on the standings. And I understand there was a really big point difference between Matteo Rizzo and Alexander Severin. But honestly, had they both gotten the scores that they deserved, I don't think that the podium would have been like that. Because Matteo Rizzo obviously deserved more than he got, and Alexander Severin deserved less than what he got in both the short and the free skate. Um, I really, really don't understand what the judges see in him to give him that many presentation points. Because what he mainly has is jumps. Um, and... I don't know if, if it's different if you watch him live. It's, it always is. I will always give people the benefit of the doubt if you haven't watched him live. Because I, I thought the same thing about like Alina before I watched her live. Because I really hated her short program last season. And then I watched it in person. I was like, never mind. This is pretty good. Um, but it's just... Especially the short... Not the short program. The free skate just 
feels so empty to me. The transitions, I mean, the transitions are barely there. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm very conflicted because I, I don't think I've seen a, a men's skater be this overscored. Uh, it, just not that I can recall, like, in international competition. And I'm sure some of you are going to say, like, Shoma, Nathan, use it when he skates badly. Because, um, yeah, all three of those were definitely overscored. Like, I will... I'm not gonna stand behind whatever you used to go out of a Silicon Cup. Did he win? Uh, should he have won? Yes, that's without a doubt. He he deserved to win, which is why I'm not complaining too much. But there's something to be said about the fact that he made so many mistakes and still got a 90 plus amazing score. Um, anyway, that is for Silicon Cup. Um, but Alex Severin's score just confuses me. It w it was really really. I just I am questioning it so much. I would. One day I really want to like look at him and Mateo's programs again and score them how I think they should be scored and see if if, if it really would have made like the difference because it was like a thirty point difference between them. That's why it's so crazy for me to think that it should have been reversed between them. I think they should still. Um, I think Alexander should still have been on the podium because he was definitely one of the people who skated the cleanest. <sighs> but I just I'm I'm conflicted. Um. I just if if any if anyone like is uh, has like an opinion about this, I would really love to hear it because I just the the scores really confused me. Like, I was I was sitting there with my friend and we were watching Europeans and we were just both like, what? Because again, it's nothing against him. It's just the scoring is so weird. Um, and this this is not nationals. This is international competition. Like, complain about Nathan's score at National as much as you want. He was going to win anyway. And this, despite the fact that I personally think that it's an injustice for Nate, to Nathan to give him that big of a score when he obviously won't get that in international competition, um, it's not going to matter that much because it's just Nationals. But this was international competition. Um, and I just, I feel conflicted. <laughs> um, but regardless of that, it was, a, it was actually a really good competition. Uh, some of the people who I had hoped stepped up just didn't. Uh, it was really, really sad for Mikhail Kolyada to to plummet the way he did in the free skate. Um, he said that his wrist um, is it, is fine, fine. It's just sprained, um, and it's better that you have the wrist sprain than the ankle. You see why? Um, but yeah, um, definitely <sighs> sad to see that. Cause I would have loved for for Javi Mikhail and then. I had like a whole bunch of skaters who could have taken third place for me. I, I wanted, uh, Matteo Rizzo was one of them actually. Matteo Rizzo, because that boy is my, he's so good. Future of Italian skating, definitely. Because um, he, he's just full of life. Um, Dennis Vasilias was another person I really wanted on the podium, but I didn't get because inconsistency and he's trying for the quad and that's fine. You need to, he needs to you know, off his technical to really be competitive. So I think it's fine that he's trying so much because it is still, this is the beginning of a new quad. So this is where you should experiment, if anything. Um, I just hope that in the future he he steps up and becomes that competitor. We all know he can be. Um, yeah, Michael Persina was another one who, who could have made the podium. Um, but it didn't happen. Um, but close for a lot of people. Um, yeah. I think I'm just gonna close up Europeans now. It's just Javi was was definitely the main story, and he did well. He became the first person to win seven consecutive European championships, and he tied Kushenko, I believe, for the most won European championships. Um, so that <laughs> good for him. It's that was just amazing, um, and he definitely deserved it. Oh, I did promise to talk about uh, Javi's complaints about the ICU. It was, it was really really refreshing to see him just lash out on the judges um now i don't necessarily believe that it was unjustified that his style got the under rotation call um i think that there was some inconsistencies and some other skaters should have gotten under rotation calls if that was what they call for under rotation because um they have sh uh the rules have become stricter like before it was uh a quarter you were allowed to under rotate and now it's 45 degrees i believe um and they were definitely missing a little bit uh, on the rotation for Javi Sal. Uh, but the, the, honestly, the, ang the angle of the, <laughs> the camera of the, the footage I had was, I, I couldn't see 
for sure if it was under rotation or not, but there was definitely some mice flying up, so it could have been. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but his his best complaint that I felt like he had, or the two best things that he pointed out, was the fact that under this new scoring system, we still have the judges uh, who they they just they're just not on the same page. Cause he did say like, there's something wrong with with the judges if if one person gives you a plus four and another judge gives you a minus two. That's a seven point difference. And when you're doing a quad, that's a lot of points. Um, and because there is a reason that they have the system where it's only like the highest score and the lowest score goes out. And they have so many judges is to prevent national biases, to prevent just bias of any kind. But there shouldn't be that big of a gap, even if you're like, you want to score a certain skater higher or lower you wouldn't go that far up or that far down. That just, it doesn't make any sense. There's something wrong when, when one, one judge thinks they should get, get a negative score and another thinks, well, this is nearly perfect. Um, and we've seen that. When you look at the judges scores, there are a lot of those cases where the, the, the difference between points are, is just so huge. It makes no sense. Um, so that was one really good complaint I thought he had. And the second one was the fact that the judges should be able to look at pre-rotation because um, it's in the technical handbook i believe that if there is pre-rotation you can take down the gui for bad takeoff and you could also take off just on the jump itself because if it's too pre-rotated you should downgrade it from a quadruple to a, from a triple to a double or whatever um so that i thought those were complaints were really good because especially for toe jumps a lot of toe jumps tend to be very pre-rotated and at some point it's so pre-rotated that you shouldn't call it a quad or a triple um so i i really hope that the isu is gonna like take that complaint to heart because when it's coming from a skater like javi um the isu can't just sweep it under the rug um and I feel like other skaters are definitely, like other skaters are definitely gonna back him up and it should be looked at. It, there are some issues with this judging system and there always has been. And I don't think changing the judge- judging system is gonna change that. It's just gonna be about the harshness of the judges and the technical panel. Um, and then of course, consistency with the skaters. You can't just under rotate one skater and then not do it for another one. They made the same mistake. Um, another ridiculous thing about Alexander Samarin scoring when, <sighs> Because uh, we've seen this like a couple of times. When he has a jump and he puts his hand down, he still somehow gets a positive GOE. It's happened twice this, twice this season anyway. And then when any other skater does it, they get minus GOE, which is correct, obviously. But you can't just, why are you doing this? What? what? Anyway, <laughs> um, enough about what has happened. Let's go into predictions for four continents. Um, four continents starts today, so I'm going to start with the women, which is happening in just a couple of hours. Um, I'm gonna be real with you. I really want that Japanese sweep. I really do want it. Um, there are a lot of skaters here that I like. Um, I've already talked about the the U.S. women, but I Yun So Lim. Oh my God, she's so good. I love her so bad. Um, and then a couple of others, but the Japanese girls, Nika, Kaori, Mai Mihara, they have the goods. They're and they're all three of them are pretty consistent. Rika is probably the least consistent, but she has a triple axle and a, then two more triple axles to make up for it. So even if she does has a little mistake, she still has the quality and the content to just go up in those scores. So here is gonna be my official prediction for four continents. In bronze, my Mihara. She deserves this. In silver position, and this is gonna be a bit of a risk. But I'm gonna say Rika Kikura, and then for first Kaori Sakamoto. Now I looked this up, and I'm pretty sure that neither in the men or the women there has been a skater who has taken two consecutive victories. I really want Kaori to be the first to do so, and if Kaori isn't the first to do it, I would love for Boyang to do it because I want him to win so badly. For the men's podium, I think my prediction is more gonna be based off of what I want versus what I think is very likely. The, the interesting thing here is that we don't have Nathan and we don't have Yusu both out for various reasons. Um, not that it's very unusual for Yusu, he never really does for continents. Um, 
But a big favorite going into this competition is gonna be Shoma. And it has been for a lot of competition where he's been at, because it's Shoma. He's very, very good. <sighs> but he never really does it, because his Silver Curse is so strong. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna make the same mistake I did at the Grand Prix Final and predict him for, for gold, because it's maybe it's not his time yet. Um or maybe it is. But I'm gonna predict him for silver. And because I believe in curses and blessings, Jun Wan's bronze blessing is gonna come through, probably, hopefully, and he's gonna get that bronze. And in gold, we can have Bo Yang Jin, who had that great skate at nationals, skated his free skate clean, and he was so good and magical. And if he can do that here, he could definitely win. He has the content, he has the presentation scores potential, because uh, the judges hate him. Uh, <laughs> But he could win. Uh, another contender for a medal, a strong contender, I believe, is Jason Brown. Uh, if he skates clean and someone else of the top three, not necessarily top three, but of the three that I mentioned don't, he could take home a medal of any color, I believe. Like, literally. If the top make enough mistakes, he could definitely go home with gold. Um, Vinton Xiao. Hmm. He's always a question mark because it depends. First of all, it depends on how harsh the, the technical panel is. Because as much as he's working on those under rotations, it's a slow progress, and that makes sense. It, you don't just you don't just fix under rotations in a day or a month. It takes time, and from what I can gauge, it's getting better, but he's still not there. Um, I don't think we're gonna see him on the podium, honestly. Um, but you never know. Um, who else is there? Oh, we have, um, oh, what's his name? I have it right here. Um, the other guy from US. The guy who has the, the crazy ass transitions into that triple sacco. Um, oh, I forget, I forget about the Canadians. Holy shit. Keegan Messing could definitely make a, a, a splash here too. Uh, Tomoki Hiwatashi, that's the guy I was talking about. Um, yeah, Keegan Messing, definitely also contender for, for podium, and also for gold. He has the potential, and he's landing clean quads, quad toes, and quad lutzes in practice. Um, Nam Nguyen, I don't think he's going to be a contender for medal, but he could definitely push for top five. Um, but again, it depends on how many people, um, make mistakes in, in the, in the top. Um, yeah, um. Basically, what I want to see is Junwon on the podium, because so far he's had a perfect season. Um, not many people can brag about having had a perfect season. I think the only other two would be kind of useful, although I don't, kind of don't want to count him because he hasn't been in competitions for, for a couple of months. Then Shoma and Nathan, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, oh, this is 42 minutes long, holy shit. No one's going to listen to this. If you are listening to this, I should probably set this at the top. Listen to it as a podcast. Um, <laughs> Um, yes, but I, I, I believe in Shuma Silver Curse so badly. Um, and clearly he does too, if you listen to some of his, uh, his interviews, it's really funny. Um, yeah, that was figure skating. I, I really miss talking about figure skating. So, um, I'm probably, I'm gonna, I want to make another one very soon after Four Continents is over and then we're, then we'll see whatever, I, what I do with Worlds. I don't know. Uh, at the very least, I am leaving for Japan a couple of days before that starts, so. Uh, yeah. Um, that's it. You can leave a like if you listen to this all the way through. Leave a comment below what you, what your predictions for Four Continents is and your, your thoughts about all the competition we just recapped. And uh, you can subscribe if you want to see more. This is not what I do usually, but whatever. Um, and until next time, bye.